there's a lot of little mistakes you could make when you're doing your cardio. But what about the seven biggest mistakes? Now I know that sounds kind of cheesy because there's a lot of videos out there in the internet that will just pull random information from random websites and put them into a video. But I want to break down what I truly think are the seven biggest cardio mistakes. And they're not just random things. They're physiologically backed, they're science backed, and they make a lot of sense. But they're also kind of unconventional. So we're going to get right to this so we're not wasting any time. I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button, but I also want to make sure you hit that bell icon. That way you can be part of my notification squad and know whenever I post a new video. Because we post videos three to seven times per week and it's always good content like this. So let's go ahead and let's dive right in to number one. Okay, the number one mistake that people make is never ever varying their cardio intensity. Okay, they'll go on a treadmill, they'll go on an elliptical or something like that, or even if they do high intensity interval training, they're keeping their intensity roughly the same day over day. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to condition the heart to get super adapted. Now, ultimately, we want this to a degree. We want the heart to get adapted. We want that left ventricle to get a little bit larger, a little bit stronger. We want the muscle cell wall, the other wall muscle wall, the heart to get bigger and stronger so that our stroke volume increases. But if it happens too much, then what happens is we get way too efficient. You see, the metabolic or fat loss effect of cardio comes from it being a little bit challenging. So when it starts getting too easy from an endurance, from a heart standpoint, it's actually not having as good of an effect on our body composition. Sure, it's good for our cardiovascular system, but also varying your intensity is gonna be good for that. So you just wanna do some days where you're going easy, some days where you're pushing it, some days where you're doing easier intervals, some days where you're doing harder intervals. Now, same thing applies with your lungs. You see, your lungs adapt, and your lungs become more efficient at transferring oxygen. But also, your diaphragm is a muscle, and your diaphragm helps expand your ribcage so that you can breathe. So when your diaphragm becomes more efficient at expanding and contracting, well then, of course, breathing in general becomes easier, which means working out is easier. It sounds kind of counterintuitive, but you don't want working out to become easy. It needs to be mildly difficult, and you need to always be pushing it a little bit. So this leads me in to number two. Okay, this mistake is very similar to number one, but it has more to do with sort of the kinesiology side, sort of the body mechanics. And that's doing the same movements for cardio over and over again. I'll give you a very basic example, okay? You see the person that goes into the gym and they go on the elliptical and they just hit the elliptical for 30, 40 minutes every single day. But then you notice that they're never really getting any results. Well, it isn't just because their metabolism is adapted to that. It's because they're lacking two things. They're lacking progressive overload, okay? They're staying at the same resistance, so there's no overload on the muscle. It's just getting in a rhythm. But they're also never cross-training and changing direction of movement. So if you're moving in one direction, your body is going to do whatever it can to find some efficiency with that. Another example is a runner. You see a lot of runners that aren't in amazing shape, yet they're decent runners. They don't have the body you would necessarily want, but they're good at running. It's because their bodies have gotten so adapted to just having short hip flexors that move them through the motions, their hamstrings are used to moving through that specific motion, their quads move through that specific motion, but the moment you have them do some kind of lateral movement, <laughs> they're huffing and puffing because they had to move outside of the realm of what they're normally doing. It's never about adapting too much. It's always about shocking the system. So cross train. If you do the elliptical, then one day go do the stair climber. If you always do the stair climber, then one day go hit the treadmill on an incline. Switch it up, do some high intensity interval training. It makes a big difference. Okay, number three is aiming for a specific heart rate range. I know a lot of people that base their training off of a simple heart rate monitor. This is not the way to go. And even worse, basing it off that little chart that's on the treadmill, because that's totally bogus. Here's why this is a problem. Okay, the heart rate, sure, that has some merit. The problem is that weather will change it dramatically. Weather will change your heart rate. If it's hot out, your heart rate's gonna change. If you don't sleep well, your heart rate is naturally gonna elevate, sometimes 10, 15, even 20 beats per minute, depending on how sleep deprived you are, because you're in a stress state. You have different catecholamines, adrenaline pumping, everything like that. That's a big deal. Okay, so that means that when you go to the gym, you're registering in your mind and you're registering heart rate wise that you're working out harder than you are. So you're actually not getting that much of an effect. So you're just, I'm trying to get to my 160 heart rate. Well, you got to 160 a lot easier because you didn't sleep. Okay, the other thing is stress. It's, studies have shown too that like even stress from work or stress from home can increase your beats per minute four to six, sometimes even more than that beats per minute. That's a lot, so we really wanna be careful there. So what do you do to fix that? 
Well, you don't pay attention to your target heart range. If you do want to play around with that, look at heart rate variability. That's a little bit more advanced and I've done videos on that, but that's something you might want to follow. This next one is one that you maybe have done before, or maybe you've seen the guys in the gym that are doing it. The guys that go ahead and do some bench press and then immediately jump off the bench press and start hitting jump rope for a while. Now, I don't just mean jump rope, but any kind of cardio in between sets. I understand the premise of this. Let's try to get our workout in and combine our cardio so we can get in and out of the gym as fast as possible. Yes, that makes sense, but segregate your cardio from your lifting. It's very important. If you do any kind of cardio between your lifting, do accept the fact that you are going to slow down the results of the actual lifting. You're gonna fatigue yourself. There's a couple things that go on. First of all, your task switching. Studies have shown that it takes a lot of oxygen to take your brain from going one direction and to have it shift to another direction. Our bodies and our brains aren't designed to like task switch super efficiently. We're designed to be a little bit more focused. We're not multitaskers. So if you're bench pressing and you're in lifting mode and then you try to switch gears over to cardio mode, believe it or not, that takes extra oxygen consumption and it completely throws you aloof. So this causes central nervous system fatigue, which therefore messes you up even more. Okay, so it drains a lot of these energy stores from the nervous system and overall. But lastly, it affects your creatine phosphate levels. Your creatine phosphate levels, that's what's gonna give you that initial surge of strength when you're lifting. At the end of the day, you're lifting is what is going to increase your resting metabolic rate and make you burn fat more. So don't sacrifice your lifting for cardio. Okay? Your cardio should be good, but it should be separate and apart. So don't do your cardio in between sets unless you're doing a specific tailored workout as such. Okay? The next one is doing your cardio in a non-fasted state. I can't even remember the last time that I deliberately went out and did cardio for cardio's sake, not on an empty stomach. Okay, when you're on an empty stomach, your sympathetic nervous system kicks into gear. What this means is that you have more adrenaline, you have more epinephrine, you have all these different things that are causing you to burn more fat. Okay, mainly because they cause the upregulation of what's called cyclic adenosine monophosphate. Save you the details there, but basically what that does is it tells your body, hey, we need to start burning energy that is stored because this person is in some kind of stressful situation. Okay, it doesn't have to be a bad stressful situation, but the fact is cyclic adenosine monophosphate allows fatty acids to get mobilized and turns that switch from storage to burning. And this will only occur if insulin is not present. What that means is the moment you eat, insulin is present, which means that cyclic adenosine monophosphate can't kick into overdrive and you cannot burn as much fat. So do your cardio in a fasted state, save yourself the time, save yourself the energy. Okay, the number six cardio mistake is going to be doing your cardio in a pre-workout state. Very similar to how I discussed it in between your sets. Okay, studies have shown that if you do cardio pre-workout, your strength decreases dramatically. Remember, the biggest driver of our metabolism is our muscle. And I don't care whether you are a 300 pound bodybuilder or whether you are a 105 pound, four foot seven female that's just trying to stay in shape. Okay, the fact is, Cardio is not necessarily what drives our metabolism. Cardio is a catalyst. The weight training is what actually drives our metabolism because it builds the muscle. Okay, little muscle or a lot of muscle, muscle burns fat. So when we sacrifice our workouts for cardio, that's when we mess things up. Your cardio should be after the workout when you're segregating it, not before. Again, it comes back to that central nervous system fatigue once again. What's wild is that when you fatigue your central nervous system too much, you have an upregulation of serotonin. This upregulation of serotonin sounds like a good thing because it's a feel-good hormone, but it increases the perception of your activity. Let me give you an example. If you were to go sit in a sauna or a steam room and started to break a sweat and then went right into the gym and started working out, wouldn't your perception of your workout be a little bit higher simply because you're already sweating? See, a lot of times we, we come to believe that just because we're sweating, we're working out harder. That's not the case. So it's like if you go and you do cardio first and then you start lifting, you psych yourself out. You think your workout is better than it was because you're already sweating, your heart rate's up a little bit. That doesn't mean anything. That's, that's one factor when you look at your workouts. So disregard that. Separate your cardio and separate your lifting. Okay, and the number seven mistake. Okay, this is a big one though, is people are simply overtraining with their cardio you have to let yourself recover, not only for your performance, but so that you don't adapt too much in an ineffective way. We've come full circle here. Adaptation is not our friend in this case. We don't wanna be adapted. 
Okay? We want to be fat adapted where our body is used to burning fat, but we don't want our body just efficiently expecting us to do cardio. If we do cardio every single day, then the body expects us to do cardio. It becomes our norm. Take some days off and you will have a bigger effect. I would rather you do cardio three or four days per week or even five days per week, but do it with intervals where you're surging up and down with different movements than just getting up seven days a week and hitting the elliptical for 15 to 20 minutes. It's just not gonna get you that much of an effect. So anyway, hopefully this becomes the internet's leading cardio mistake video. And with your help, it can be. So give it a share. Go ahead and comment down below if you have ideas for future videos, and I'll see you in the next one.